Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm excited to do. It's going to be a new one in my ranking series. I've been ranking a bunch of my different makeup categories. I will have my playlist linked down below if you want to catch up with any that you might have missed. Today's video I'm going to be ranking all of my powders. This one has been super requested, so it is time to rank my powders. I have both loose powders and also uh, pressed powders that I will be ranking today. I have 14 different powders, so if you want to see how I rank them from my least favorite to my top favorite, let me go ahead and get started. Okay, I did want to say that I do have a get ready with me on this look. This is from my hot takes video that should be live now. I am pre-filming uh, pretty hard in advance because I'm actually going to Florida for a few days. I think this video might be going up after I'm back, but I have to not only pre-film for when I'm gone, but also when I am back, but I'm like just getting back and unpacking and everything. So I will link this video where I did a get ready with me on this look. So I really thought powder was going to be one of my easier categories. I, for some reason I did. A, I think I thought I had like five powders, like realistically in my mind, I know I had more, but I was like, I just only have like a handful of powders, it'll be fine. So when I counted 14, I was like slightly more than I was expecting, but also it was so hard. <laughs> It was so hard. I feel like, like this is one I think I think I say this with almost every with almost every ranking video, but I feel like unconfident in my rankings, especially when we get to the top. It's just so hard, but I'll try to give you my best uh my best feedback and thoughts on these products. But starting off at number 14, I have a product from Hourglass and this is the Ambient Lighting Powder in Dim Light. I have just a little mini here. I got this because so many people rave about these Hourglass finishing powders. So this is my only like finishing powder out of the group. I thought that I would include it uh, just because it's powder for your face. I don't know. I, th I thought that's why. But if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know that for some reason these just don't, I just don't like them. I don't know what it is. I feel like I'm probably like the only person in the world who doesn't enjoy these powders, but I have still kept this one and I'm still trying. Like I had it in a, uh, in my shop, my stash bag, like every once in a while I still bust it out and I still try it and I still just don't see it, but I'm waiting. Someone told me I might need more mature skin and then maybe I would appreciate it more. So you know what? Maybe that's the thing. And I'm just, I just keep trying with this little guy, but I, I don't know. I just don't really reach for this one a ton uh it's hard for me to remember to use it so that is why this one is coming in at number 14 but it is kind of funny with my number one pick my first and last picks i thought were pretty fun so uh stay tuned we'll get there okay at number 13 i have this one from ColourPop. this is the no filter sheer pressed powder I'm just not a huge fan of this one. I think that it's fine. Like, I don't mind it. Besides the Hourglass one, I don't feel like I have any powders in here that I really dislike. I really, like, refuse to use. Like, that sort of thing. I like all of my powders. This is one that I'm just kind of like, eh, like, it's fine. I can wear it on my under eyes. I can wear it on, like, the rest of my face. I like the little compact in here. I have the shade light, but it's just one that doesn't, like, overly impress me. I just think like it's decent. So that's from ColourPop at number 13. At number 12, I have this one from Laura Mercier. This is kind of like my OG baking powder, if you will, when the baking craze was really in in the beauty community. This is the Secret Brightening Powder. So this is just a bit of a smaller guy, but I have used a lot of this powder because I used to really be into super bright under eyes, like super, like way lighter concealer with the Secret, secret Brightening Powder on top. That was my thing. I've grown, grown out of that now, thank goodness, because sometimes I looked a little weird. I look back at some photos and I'm like, looking a little odd, girlfriend, but you made it through. Uh, because this is like a stark white powder, and if you're not careful to really like dust away any excess, like, like I said, when I used to bake and really put a lot of powder on my face and then let it sit there for a very long time, if you don't really make sure you wipe it all away, you can get some of that flashback in there and all of that. Uh, I still, I had so, like, I had such a good time with this one. I still have it. I do still like it. It's a little bit of a thicker powder and all that. It's just not a favorite of mine anymore, especially with how my preferences are now, but I got a lot of use out of this one. Uh, as always with my ranking videos, if anything is newer to my collection that I'm still trying out, that I haven't even, like, done my, like, my proper review yet on my channel, I do not include those in the ranking videos because if I'm just trying them out, I, I wouldn't be sure how to rank them. So if there's anything in here that you've noticed that I that I have or that I'm trying out but you don't see it in the ranking video, that is why. It's also one of like my fears when it comes to these ranking videos that I'm gonna miss something like really obvious in my collection because it's gonna be like, oh, do I have a powder in my purse? Sometimes I put one in there. 
I'm gonna go look. Okay, there was no powder in my purse. I have dry skin, so I don't normally need to powder, but sometimes with summer, warmer weather, if I'm gone for a long time, I'll put a powder in my purse. But it's like I was saying, I get so worried I'm gonna miss something obvious, and people are like, how did you not remember that? And I'm like, no, why? <laughs> okay, moving on though, at number 11, this is another one from ColourPop. This is the no filter setting powder, but this is the loose powder versus the pressed powder. I like the loose powder just a little bit more. Uh, it's not my absolute favorite loose powder obviously since it's kind of coming in a little bit towards the bottom but i don't mind it i had it in a shot my stash bag fairly recently and i think it's fine loose powders are pretty messy but i think that it's fine it's a little bit on the heavier side a little bit thicker um but it's it's a decent powder and then at number 10, I have this one from Neutrogena. This is the Skin Clearing Mineral Powder. I like this one. The color is slightly off. I think it's, so it's soft beige 50. The color is just like very, very slightly off for me. So a lot of times I will just put this um, kind of on my under eyes instead of all over my face. But I really do like the powder. It's similar to another drugstore one that I'm going to talk about um towards the top here if you will this one is just a little bit heavier on the skin and again the color match just isn't great for me but it's a nice one um i think that it's very like smoothing on the skin like if you have like pores and such like it's very like smoothing in that area which i do like um and especially for neutrogena it's very affordable which is awesome Okay, coming in at number nine, this is from Urban Decay. This is their all-nighter uh, waterproof setting powder. So you have some fun packaging here. Again, I, I like this powder. I don't really have a lot of complaints about it. Uh, I don't think that it's like, mm, how would I describe this one? Like if I have a concealer that kind of creases a lot, I don't want to pair it with this because I don't feel like it has a lot of that oomph of like really setting a concealer or something along those lines but i think that it's nice if i have you know a concealer that doesn't crease a lot i can run this under on my under eyes and i like it that way sometimes i will apply it all over my face also but again i just feel like i have other powders that kind of like lock makeup in a little bit better than the urban decay but i still like it i still think that it's a nice option and then at number eight i have another little mini here this is from fenty beauties the little mini guy this is their Pro Filter Instant Retouch Setting Powder, and I have the shade Butter. Again, I like this powder. I've had it in a Shop My Stash bag recently, so just a little one here. This reminds me a little bit of the ColourPop, uh, yes, Loose Setting Powder as well. So if you've been interested in the Fenty, I don't think they're like exact dupes, and I think the ColourPop is maybe just a little bit heavier, but I think that they're kind of close to one another. So I know Fenty is... Um, obviously higher end price tag so that's an option there but i do like butter i think this one also is very once again just very kind of like smoothing on the under eyes it can really make the under eyes look really nice but because this one also is a little on the heavier side like it's not as it's not i always say finely milled like i want like i don't know what another term i could describe the powder with but it's just a little bit on the heavier side so after i wear it for a couple hours especially if i put a lot on my under eyes my under eyes can look a little bit heavy, so that's why it's not ranked higher, but I still think it's nice. I still do like this powder from Fenty Beauty. Okay, so that was kind of like my bottom half, if you will. Like I said, I for the most part, I, I really like all of my powders, but those were kind of like my bottom category. Moving over into my top, yeah, my top seven. Hmm, I didn't even plan that. Nice. Uh, but moving on to my top seven, this is where it got really hard for me. And I think with setting powders for me, there's powders that I like for different reasons. So it was really, really hard for me to rank these. But just know, especially for these top seven, I recommend them all and I like them all. <laughs> So I just want to throw that out there. Sometimes it's hard when you rank products, especially with ranking and not just reviewing, because if you rank something lower, it like people might like if for some reason people think you don't like that product or you're not recommending it or like why do you still have it? It's like no, I still like it, but like we're ranking. Like this is hard, man. We're doing hard things on YouTube these days, guys. I should be wearing a sweatpant. Oh my goodness. Okay. Coming in at number seven, this is from Revlon. This is the Photo Ready Candid Anti-Pollution Setting Powder. I have the shade 001. This is currently in my Shop My Stash bag at this moment. If you guys are not familiar with my Shop My Stash series, I will link the playlist down below. And I really like this. I think this is a really nice, uh, especially drugstore option. I know I just did my hot takes video and we talked about how it shouldn't be like, this is nice, especially for drugstore. I know that, but I'm saying like, especially like, for the price tag how do i say this in the best way 
It's a drugstore and it's a really bomb powder. I think that it's really good. This might be, oh, no, we have another drugstore one that's even higher, but especially for a loose powder, I, th I, would like, I really don't think that you can go wrong with this one. I also really like the foundation. The concealer from the line didn't work for me, but the powder and the uh, foundation I think are really nice. I like the packaging of this with like this little flip up here. It kind of helps it not be so messy, especially when you first twist off because sometimes you twist off and it's just like poof, a bunch of powder, but it's very light on the under eyes and I think that it's a really stellar powder. So I really do like this one from Revlon. At number six, I have this one from Milk Makeup. I do actually have two from Milk Makeup. I have light and medium. I tend to use the light shade more, especially on my under eyes, because again, I do still like my under eyes to be a little bit brighter, uh, just not as bright as they once were. Uh, so light usually works well for me. If I have a really deep tan going on and I want to powder my whole face, I can use the medium, but for the most part, I do like the light from Milk. Uh, this has been a powder that I really have enjoyed for a long time. My light one, it used to have the covering like the Revlon one, but it snapped off and then Milk even messaged me because I saw that in my video and they're like, you can just snap it back on. And then I have no, I don't know if I just threw it away right away or what happened, but apparently if that happens to yours, you can just snap it back on. I just didn't know that. Um, so this is what the powder looks like and I really like it. I've really talked very highly about the Milk Makeup. It's the blur setting powder. Uh, I do think it really does help blur. So I like it on my under eyes. I like it on my full face, especially right here where I really deal with some pores or up here on my forehead. I think that it's a really nice powder. Again, slightly heavier. Uh, and because once again, I do have dry skin, I don't have to powder my face every single day. I generally will always powder my under eyes to set my concealer, but for my full face, I often don't need it. So sometimes that's why I point out if I find a powder to be heavier on me because I don't have as much oil on my skin, I guess, that's kind of like sucking up the powder. So sometimes the powder just really sits there on top of my skin. So that's why I want, like, that's why you're hearing me point that out a little bit more. Um, but again, really do like this one from Milk Makeup. I've used it a lot. I've recommended it a lot. And then at number five, I have this one from Laura Mercier. This is the uh, translucent setting powder. This is kind of like an OG of YouTube. Everyone was raving about this for a while because I am a true wild child at heart. When I was uh, deciding to purchase a loose setting powder, I went with the Secret Brightening because I'm a rebel. Uh, but I really do also like the the just like the regular translucent powder and especially again as my preferences have changed and i'm not going for that stark white under eye i really do like this but i also really enjoy this powder for setting my whole face this is one um, that just feels really lightweight on the skin it's not too heavy it doesn't look too cakey it just blends in so nicely into my skin no matter what like foundation i'm wearing it just looks really pretty on i feel like this is a great powder for really kind of like locking the makeup in if i am wearing a foundation that that maybe breaks up a little bit quicker or something like that um, or maybe a foundation that's a little bit more like the satin uh, finish and maybe even my natural oils are going to break through at like eight or ten hours I'm aware of this for a really long time I know that I can wear Laura Mercier and she's really going to keep everything in place so for like weddings and things like that this is a really nice graduation parties whatever it might be this is a really nice powder so I'm a big fan of that one I'm glad I finally was able to try kind of like the YouTube OG if you will and then at number four I have this one from Lawless Beauty I'm a big fan of the Lawless Beauty powders this one here is the classic. I also have the brightening. I do like the brightening for my under eyes. I can use the classic on my under eyes and also my whole face. Generally, I just will use the brightening on my under eyes versus my whole face, but I, I like that one too. Uh, and I do think that it's really pretty on the under eyes, but it's not too, too bright. Like it's, it almost has more of like a pink tinge versus like white white like the Laura Mercier secret brightening but the classic translucent powder is so pretty uh, again it's nice and lightweight on the skin this was one of those powders that from the first time I started trying it I was like dang I think that I really like this and uh, I, I really do I definitely do recommend it this is what it looks like again a little bit more on the uh, messier side and this is one too, like even as I'm looking at it right now, I feel like this would, like looking at it, I would feel like this would be a heavier powder or one that could cake up easily. But I do not find that, especially when I apply it with like a, a damp sponge. I just think it looks so, so nice on the skin. So I've just been a big fan of the Lawless Beauty. Uh, definitely would recommend that one also. Uh, at number three, okay, at number three, <sighs> This was so hard, man. This is so hard. 
At number three, this is one that a lot of people love. I really like this one, and obviously I'm ranking it high. I do really enjoy this one too, but it also is pretty pricey. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. I have the shade 2 Medium. Now, this is one that I have hit pan on, which is very exciting. Um, I feel like with this powder, I really like it. I just feel like it's really pricey for how quickly you can go through it. I have seen so many people go through entire uh, compacts of this powder and I've been like, wow, they must really love that powder or use it a ton. And then I got it and I hit pan on it pretty fast and that does not happen. I'm very light handed. I have a larger makeup collection. I have dry skin and I don't use powder every day. For me to hit pan on this one as quickly as I did, I was like, oh, I see how it is. And like I said, this is pricey. It is really beautiful though. It's a very, very very lightweight on the skin and I think that's why a lot of people really enjoy it especially for the under eyes I I think that it does look really beautiful I like the way it feels I never get that feeling of like I've gone overboard um it the powder looks too heavy on me even on the delicate areas like underneath your eyes it really is a very beautiful powder and I do enjoy it a lot if I were to repurchase it like once I go through it because I feel like I will go through this it would have to be at some sort of like discount or on sale or something along those lines but it is a really it is a really pretty powder i understand why so many people like it uh at number two this is also a pressed powder and this is a drugstore version i don't think this is like an exact dupe to the charlotte tilbury but this to me is like if you want a really bomb pressed powder but you don't want to pay a higher price tag maybe check this one out this is from CoverGirl. This is the Vitalist Healthy Powder. And what do you know? I have also hit pan on this one. So that is pretty exciting to me. Uh, so I really like this powder. I don't think it's as lightweight as the Charlotte powder. But I... But sometimes I do like that because I can use a light layer on my under eyes to kept set my concealer. Perfect. But because this one has a little bit more oomph and a little bit more coverage, I can also use it to set my entire face when I am looking to do that. Which again, is not an everyday occurrence for me. But when I want to, um, when I want to set my foundation, when I want to really make sure everything is staying in place and all of that, I go for the CoverGirl so often because it's still light. Uh, and I still feel like... There's times where I want to use a pressed powder versus a loose powder because I feel like the pressed powder can be a little bit lighter on my skin. That's when I go for this one. Uh, and I just think that it's so pretty. And obviously, I've, I've used it a lot. I hit pan on this one after I hit pan on the Charlotte Tilbury. And I've used this. I know I've used this more than the Charlotte. So I travel with this one quite a bit too. It always seems to like pop up in my travel bag. But I just think that it's a really pretty powder. And I really do enjoy that one. I have the shade uh, Buff Beige in this one. And then, for my number one pick, do you know what it is? My number one powder to talk about is the one from Hourglass. This is the Veil Translucent Setting Powder. That's why I thought it was so funny that I have Hourglass at 14 and also at number one. I have it first and last, but I enjoy the Veil Translucent so much. And one thing that I think is kind of funny about this as I've been planning this video the past couple days and thinking about all my powders and pulling them out, I feel like there's some sort of like property in this setting powder that is also in the finishing powder. What's interesting to me, I told myself I wasn't going to say this when I was um, make, like I was making my list this morning for the video. I was like, don't say it because you don't know what it is exactly that you're trying to say. But I feel like there is some sort of similar property between the finishing powder and then this loose setting powder that I can see. Like I understand that they're both from Hourglass and they're made from the same brand. Like there is something about both of these powders that I can see are similar to one another. I just don't know how exactly to explain it or even like put my finger on it. When I have reviewed or talked about the Veil powder in the past, I've said I feel like there's almost some sort of magical quality to this that when I apply this powder, even if I apply more or I, I apply too much, I feel like it almost looks like I'm wearing less makeup. So I can use this on my under eyes. I can use this all over my face and it almost like takes my makeup down a step. It's almost like spraying my face with a setting spray, how it kind of like melts everything into the skin and makes it look a little bit more natural. That's how I feel with this Hourglass Veil setting powder and I feel like I can see that is also why people enjoy the finishing powder. I just for some reason 
don't get on with it. I don't know. I really hope someday I do. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I hope someday I do. But so far, it hasn't happened to me yet. But I love the veil powder so much. And a truck just drove by with like the biggest dog in the back seat just smiling as he went by my window. I just made my whole day. Thanks, dude. I enjoy this one so much. I just have the mini that I grabbed from Sephora. I love getting minis, especially with products that I'm not sure if I'm going to love. Like, why not save a little bit of money? Yes, you get less product and all of that, but for me, especially with my makeup collection, it's harder for me to go through products. Like, why not grab a mini? And honestly, I mean, I, I don't know if I will ever go through this because there's a lot in here. And again, because I don't powder every day, um, I don't go through powders as quickly, but like, I would totally have this one back in my collection. Collection. I just I think that it's so beautiful. It definitely is my favorite powder I try not to wear it so much on camera these days because I feel like there was a time where it was all I was wearing Every day and I'm like, okay try to switch it up, but it still goes like this is my holy grail setting powder for sure is the hourglass veil setting powder Okay after that, that is going to wrap it up for ranking all of my powders. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts. Were there any surprises that you thought along the way? Again, this is another one that was so challenging. It is hard to rank makeup, okay? Even if you are not a YouTuber, I like challenge you. Pick a category in your collection and try to rank it and tell me how you do because I actually think it's kind of hard. But I would love to know your thoughts down below. And of course, do let me know what you want to see for my next ranking makeup video. I would love to know your thoughts. And other than that, if you guys did enjoy today's video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up. I hope that you also consider subscribing before you go. And I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.